You never hear anybody saying, I had an abortion. You never hear anybody saying, you know, being open about it. I am not sure that I've ever heard anyone in my family talk about abortion. I didn't tell the friends I was living with in London. Uh, I didn't tell the man in question. I remember thinking, you know, what would people do if they knew? I never saw my mother except once during the entire time that I was growing up. I never got a Christmas card, just never nothing. I became a runaway. I just uh, found myself out there by yourself and just beginning to realize, you know, you're getting pregnant. It was just somebody that, uh, you know, I thought that loved me, you know, one of those stupid things that young women think. I just felt that I wanted somebody, something to love. I was 16 when I had her. They put my daughter in my arms, and uh, she looked at me and said, if you don't want me, I don't want you either. You know, she had that look, you know, very and uh, I fell in love with her then. And then I began to dream about giving her the opportunities that I never had. And then I went to work in the bond laundry. Uh, salary was $12.41 a week, but I, I worked and I took care of her and that's later on. I, sort of uh, went with someone else and found myself pregnant, which I knew I wasn't gonna have no more babies. I wasn't gonna be like my mother. You heard about people who just did abortions. There was no secret. I, at that time, I did not know it was illegal. It was, it was something discussed. It was talked about. I can remember the place very well. I just walked in, and the woman was ready for me. It was a midwife, a, a, a woman, very receptive, very warm, and she, she did what needed to be done. And I left, paid her and left. I just felt that I was sort of lucky enough to be able to get the money to even do it. I did get an infection. I ended up in Harlem Hospital. And the nurses were very nasty because they wanted to know who did it. And I, w I was not going to tell them who did it because it was none of their business. They said, oh, you're going to die in the bed. But uh, no one could tell me what I should have done or what I shouldn't do. And I did what I thought. But uh, I guess I must have been about 20. Uh, at that stage of my life that I felt was important for me to be able to continue. I have no regrets. I grew up in a family in the middle of five children, and my family's Mormon. And my father is a my father is a Marine, Republican, Mormon lawyer. But I was raised in a church where abortion was 
a horror and something that was not acceptable. I was 16. It was with my boyfriend. And the first time we had sex, it wasn't completely consensual. And I sort of had this detachment for the next couple weeks where we had sex a couple more times. Um, and I was very passive about it and very, like, traumatized and, and upset. And then later that month, um, my breasts swole up. And I just, I just knew, I knew immediately. I was surrounded by teenage pregnancy and I was surrounded by poverty. And I'm the daughter of a teenage mother who's the daughter of a teenage mother. And having that happen and having that panic of um, picturing my life. I went to my boyfriend's house. He was already at that point, had become very detached from the situation and was very intently like watching wrestling and playing video games and not um, really there immediately, was detached from me as a person. I went with my boyfriend and my friend to Planned Parenthood. I went to a room for pre-abortion counseling, which was five quick, terse questions. I really felt like I was gonna get a half hour and I would finally be able to like tell someone or talk to someone I didn't get to. And then I went in for the procedure and the doctor seemed to like look me in the eye and, and, and allow me to talk more than anyone had up to that point. And I felt immediately much better. My boyfriend, he broke up with me the next day, and I was just horrified and traumatized. And this is the only person that I felt like I could talk to in the world about it who had experienced it with me. Two weeks after I had my procedure, I came home from school, and my mother was holding a letter in the kitchen, and she was just, she was just shaking, um, and she had this very blank, expression on her face and she said sit the fuck down your dad's on his way and i was just like if my dad's coming home from work that's a problem um so i sat down and i was just i was already crying and i was just like what 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 um and she sort of threw this letter in my lap and there was the silhouette of three men and it just said the brotherhood that was the stationery in the corner and it said um you know, to hear my parents' names, both their full names. Your daughter, Jennifer, had an abortion on April 9th, 1997. Please let God guide your actions from this point forward. Signed, The Brotherhood. And so my mother's standing over me while I read this, and she yells at me, did you do this? And I said yes. And my dad came home about that time. Um, and my father is sort of a stern person in our family, but he wrapped me up into a little ball and he just, like, I was sobbing uncontrollably. And he just held me and said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, mostly because my mom at that point was attacking me. She was just screaming and yelling. Um, in a very restrained way, she seemed, very shaken and horrified and I can't believe you would do this um, you killed your baby um, and at the time I'd been going to the Bible and looking up these passages about life doesn't begin until the quickening and trying to to make it make sense to myself because it didn't feel like I had aborted a baby, but it also didn't feel like I had done away with nothing. Um, and I really wanted from her at that point just some sort of recognition. My dad was like, you should just leave, and I'd never been allowed to leave my house without saying where I was going. And it was just all of a sudden, they're not caring enough to know where I was going and, and letting me go in that condition, asking me to leave the house. It was the, first, the closest I ever came to suicide. I took, I probably, I took a lot of pills. I couldn't imagine having my mother call me a murderer again. 
She didn't talk to me very much for probably about two or three months. I was very determined to get away because everything about that place was now marked and tainted by this. So I sort of pulled my life together and only applied for colleges very far away. I went to an all-women's college, and it was probably within the first month that I was, like, you know, spilled this sob sobbing story to someone. I assumed telling someone would, that they would be as judgmental or as um, disappointed in me as I was in myself um, for getting pregnant. But it was, it was, and it was just this amazing thing to have someone hug me and be like, I'm so sorry you went through that. But I still didn't know how I felt about it. And I didn't know how I felt about it for a long time. And I know now that there are adult women in my life that had abortions. But if any of them had been open about it, if I could have gone to talk to one person who would have experienced it, I think it would have changed the neck. You know, I had years of, of really hard guilt to get over because no one I talked to would be open to me about that. Talking about it would have been enough, I think, to really change it for me. My name is Shulamit Koenig. I had an abortion in 1950. My name is Sebastiana, and I had an abortion in 2000. My name is Ingrid Tischer, and I had an abortion. I had an abortion in 1973. And I had an abortion in 1960. I had an abortion in 1939. I had an abortion. And I had an abortion. I had an abortion. And I've had three abortions. I had an abortion. And I had an abortion. I had an abortion. I've had two abortions. I had an abortion. I had an abortion. I had one abortion. And I had an abortion. I had two abortions. I had an abortion in 1988. You know, the best counter to the anti-abortion movement uh, is the truth, is just doing what we're doing now, individual women and men telling the truth about what has happened to them.